Hello, I'm Tony. I'm from Taylor Dynamometer. I'm the service manager there. And uh, we are going to uh, finish up on this coupling that we started on. We've got all parts cleaned up. Everything cleaned up nice and uh, everything seems to be in pretty good shape. So uh, this is a good candidate to accept the rebuild kit that we offer for these couplings. Uh, earlier, we did, uh, during removal of this coupling or this hub, uh, from the from the dynamometer shaft, we used a piece of bar stock with a couple of holes drilled in it, and we used a ball peen hammer. We hit the end of the shaft, the thing popped loose. That's great. It doesn't always work that way. Uh, sometimes you do need to use a puller, and uh, what I like to use if you do run into that problem is a large three jaw puller. Uh, you still dis disassemble the coupling on the shaft on the dyno and uh, push everything out of the way, and then you can actually grab the hub with the puller, uh, put your impact on it, and if it doesn't pop loose, you can hit the end of the shaft here with, uh, with, a, with a hammer, a ball peen, or a, a small hand sledge. Uh, and if that still doesn't do it, you may have to get the torch out. So you want to get an assembling torch with a rosebud tip. And uh, while there's pressure, uh, on the puller and on the coupling, warm the coupling up around uh, in between the veins here a little bit with that, with that acetylene torch. Please remember to keep the nut on the end of the shaft. Remember you got this backed off. You don't want to take it all the way off because the tighter this coupling is on the shaft, on that tapered shaft, the more, the more violent it's going to release. You don't want this thing up, end up on your toes. That would be, uh, that'd be painful. So, um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead with this rebuild. And uh, uh, what we're going to use is a, a, a rebuild kit that Taylor offers. And that rebuild kit part number is a 3N090102. Now, with that kit, you're going to get a new set of bushings, bronze bushings that are used in this assembly. You're going to get the, all the bushing hardware, which consists of uh, some 632 screws, uh, some 832 screws, uh, lock washers for those screws. Uh, you're going to get a, uh, a set of uh, 24 of these neoprene balls that we have here. And very important, it's just a little item, but it's a very small O-ring that's uh, uh, part of this assembly that's important. So we're going to go ahead and put those parts together uh, on this unit. And uh, as I said, everything's cleaned up nicely. And we're going to start out with putting uh, the bushing in on the hub. Now, this bushing, uh, it, it, you pay attention to these things uh, because you can't put it in just any way. There is actually a grease galley that is going to, so you're going to see it in, the, in this bore of the hub. All right. And that allows, when you grease the coupling, that allows grease to push through. Uh, through that galley to the bushing on the back side of the coupling. Actually, that would be the front side of the coupling because you grease from the rear side. All right, so we're going to want to put we're going to want to put that uh, that O-ring in place. And I like to put a little bit a little bit of grease on that O-ring that uh, helps it seat and make sure it doesn't get cut. No, we're just going to. Grease on the there, and put a little bit on here. Stick that in place. All right, and the grease also helps it hold it, hold it in place. <clears throat> now you need to go through and take a look at this bushing. This is the hub bushing, and if you search around a little bit, you will see there's an extra hole drilled, and this extra hole goes into this recess uh, or groove that's cut, all right? It only goes into that groove and then stops. So that means when you install this, you want to line this hole up here with that O-ring. Now what I like to do is take, you, if you have some, uh, some small all thread or something, you can, you can make a couple of, uh, uh, you know, a couple of guides here. Um, I just use an Allen wrench or something. It seems uh, a little more convenient. Not everyone has that small all thread laying around. And we're gonna slide this in and line it up with the, the holes. Thread it 
poles. All right, good there. You can use a block of wood or a dead blow hammer to gently tap this in place. Uh, if you want to throw it in a press, that's fine. Uh, we're going to just knock this down into place. Make sure these don't pop, these, your guides don't pop out of, out of whack here. Should be a snug fit. This is, this is pretty pretty typical. Alright, it appears to be in place pretty well. Also helps to have a solid work surface when you're doing this. And I've got the 832 screws here that were supplied in the kit. I've got the lock washers on them. And we're gonna put those in. Now, if, uh, if you run into a problem and the, the holes don't line up for you because it twisted while being driven down, you are going to have to take it out. This bushing is equipped with, uh, with the old bushing here, is, is set up with um, some jacking bolt holes. And that also is an 832 thread. So you can use some, some of your all thread or whatever, if you have a long uh, 832 bolt, you can use those three holes, those threaded holes to knock the old, or push the old bushing out. And that's how you're going to, when you disassemble it, when you pull the old bushing out, that's the, your best bet to, to use those holes. You won't damage the bushing. All right, we've got everything snugged up and we've got this bushing installed. Uh, and the next step will be to actually install uh, the drive plate. I like to start from the drive plate side when I put these together. Uh, really because I like the bolt head to be on the drive side of the coupling. It just makes assembly and disassembly easier, especially if you're taking it apart on the machine as, as I like to do. So again, we're gonna put a little bit of grease on, the, uh, on this bushing. Help things slide together a little better and make sure you don't have to do a dry startup on it. Let me give it a a liberal coat of grease is just fine. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, install the drive plate. Now this should be this should be a snug fit. Um, it shouldn't just fall on. If it just falls on, then your drive plate's probably worn. And it should, it shouldn't be the case. The bushing should be doing the wear. Part wearing out. Well, let's try to put this on. That's good. And we can flip this over. Now, if you remember earlier, we uh, I suggested that you punch, uh, put punch marks on the, the dry plate, the sleeve, and, and the end plate. So assuming that you did that, uh, the assembly will be much easier. If you notice, this, uh, this hub here, each one of these veins, they have a taper on them. So the, the vein is actually a little bit thicker here than it is here. And that's of course by design. And you have to make sure when you assemble this that the sleeve, when you slide the sleeve over, those tapers should oppose one another. So if the, if the, the hub is uh, thick down here, you want the, the sleeve to be thick up on the top side. Again, if you, if you punched it like you should, none of this is gonna be questioned. I like to just uh, try to make it as easy as possible. So at this point, we can set the, the sleeve in place and uh, got everything punched. I believe this is, yep, one punch here. And so we're gonna set this sleeve in place. And it should be at about there, yep, that's it. And we're going to get it seated on the shoulder. All right, so I've got the, uh, I've got the sleeve in place. And the next 
next, next step will be to install the uh, knee cream balls. So there's, like I said, there's a total of 24 of these and you do need to grease these up prior to, uh, prior to putting them, installing them into the coupling. So a very simple way to do it is just grab a cardboard box or we've got an old, old bucket here that we use and we just dump all the balls into that box or into that bucket. And we're going to pump some grease into them. And again, you really can't grease them up too much. Uh, you just want to make sure that they all have a good coating of grease on them. Uh, if you do put them in dry, uh, they will not last very long. to these balls will go in uh, there's there'll be two balls in each pocket and uh, you use a mallet or a dead blow and a drift to uh, to put them in place and they do fit they are a little bit snug so when you put them in you have to give a little pop with a, a mallet they are wipe up your your mess here it may take a little bit to get them in place so uh, be patient and uh, drive them in right now. Uh, the next step is going to be to actually install the uh, the end plate and again uh, the end plate has a bushing in it that came with the kit I went ahead and pre-installed this bushing but it goes in very similar to the other the other bushing it uh, goes in from the inside of the plate make sure you've got it aligned properly and uh, one thing you do need to watch for is there is a greaser uh, a hole that's drilled and tapped here and you want to make sure that that's part of it it's lined up with the notch in the uh, in the uh, end plate here so you can spin your greaser in there for now uh, as with the other pushing you're going to want to put some grease on it and i'm gonna, just going to put the grease right on the on the hub here. You make sure you got an even coat all the way around. Okay. And we can go ahead and install this cup, this end plate. Now, again, we had uh, we had put some punch marks on here. We want to line that up. And this again should slide in place um, pretty decent. Shouldn't take a whole lot to put, get it down into place. Okay, I've got the end plate in place. Uh, everything seems to be lined up pretty good. So we're gonna grab the, the hardware from the, from the coupling and just bolt the thing back together. Make sure you use your lock washer. I would, I would recommend using new lock washers. You do not get that in the kit from Taylor, uh, but I would, uh, I would recommend installing new lock washers. All right, we've got all the bolts, uh, all the hardware's installed, and we just need to simply torque everything up. And uh, I prefer to use the impact on it. And when you torque it up, uh, do a crisscross pattern on it because you are gonna you are gonna squeeze everything together here. So just uh, follow that that old, that old saying and get this crisscross back and forth to make sure you pull it in evenly and make sure you don't have any wobble in it. So here we are. We've got uh, we've got the coupling uh, fully assembled, and it's uh, actually ready to go on back on your machine. Um, 
when you do reinstall it, uh, make sure that the bore uh, of the hub here is clean and it's okay to run over it with, uh, with a flapper wheel, like an emery flapper wheel or something to clean it up. Uh, you do want to put it on dry uh, as well and make sure the shaft is clean and dry as well. It's a taper fit, so you don't need to use Loctite, you don't need to heat anything, you don't want to shrink it on or anything like that. Um, it's, you uh, it's reinstall the, uh, the nut on the end of the shaft. Yeah, and this you're going to torque to uh, uh, between two and 300 foot-pounds of torque, uh, about 225 foot-pounds of torque will hold it on. Make sure you use plenty of, uh, of the blue Loctite or the thread locker on the threads of the, on the end of the threads of the shaft. That'll take care of uh, yeah, holding it in place. Uh, I think that's about it here. Uh, be very careful with this when you're carrying it. it is a, it's a heavy part. Uh, what you can do uh, to help with uh, putting it back on if you have access to a, a jib crane or an overhead bridge crane, you can pull one of these bolts out and put a long piece of all thread in there uh, with a couple of hooks and you can hang it and, and slide it onto the shaft. That way no one gets hurt. Uh, once, once it's installed on the dyno, you want to ensure that you've got your, your grease zerks in both places here and give it a good uh, eight or ten pumps of grease. Uh, and then just follow the Taylor uh, recommended instructions for, for service uh, on the unit. Again, this is an annual thing. You should probably be doing this once a year, at least doing the Neoprene walls once a year. Um, one last thing is on the back side or the, the, the back, uh, the end plate on this, you see these six holes here. These holes uh, allow you to lock this coupling up to a rigid style coupling. Now the torsional coupling, it works great for engines up to about 3,000 foot-pounds of torque. You get over 3,000 foot-pounds of torque and basic, you'll, basically you'll destroy the innards of this coupling. So any engines that you run over 3,000 foot-pounds of torque, you want to get some grade 8, uh, inch and a half long, uh, one half by 20 thread, and you want to put these in and, uh, and torque them to the proper spec. I would not bother using a lock washer on that, but I would use a hardened flat washer with it. Uh, that way you'll save the inside of this coupling, uh, and of course remove those bolts then when uh, running smaller engines. If you have any questions, uh, please call us, area code 414-755-0040. Press two for parts and service, uh, either myself or one of the guys will pick up and we're happy to answer any questions. Thanks for watching.